The Lord knows that in, the, in this world, we'll have tribulations, we'll have trials, we'll have temptations. But for those who overcome these challenges, these trials, these tribulations, these temptations, there will be a reward. And we said those who will be honored in heaven, at least who are the part, the part of the church of Tartil, and the Bible says in verse 29, that last part, it says, let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit says to what the churches. Who will, who will be honored in heaven? Those who have power. Those who keep doing the works of God. And those who continue to do that work until the end. And breaking it down, he said, those who overcome are those who have been overcome by the Lord through their voluntary surrender rather than in battle. If the Lord conquered you in battle, you were destroyed. But if you voluntarily surrendered, you have overcome. Those who have who overcome are those who have conquered, who have captured the Lord's heart. Those who please Him. Those who have faith. Those who do His will. Those who are humble. If you want to capture the heart of God, have humility, have faith, be willing to do the will of God. You will capture the heart of God. You will overcome. Whenever God sees a man who is willing to do all his will, whenever God sees a man who has such faith as to believe him, even when everybody else is laughing at him, God sees a man who will pay any price to please him. If you try to fight that man, you will soon realize that it is God that is fighting him, not, not the man. You are humble before God. You are willing to do his will, all his will. You have faith, even when it doesn't make sense. God will fight for you. People will be wondering, what, what, what is it? Every time we, to, we try to attack him, we just discover that we are unable to get near him. It's not by having nine visions. It's by having a heart for God. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, I think verse 8 and 9 or so. It said, Thou hast loved the righteousness and hast hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellow. Why? Because you love what God loved. You hated what God hated. So what is the anointing? God came and surrounded you by himself. The anointing is to rob. So God was rubbing around you as he was protecting you, as he was going around you, excited that he has found a man who loves what he loves, who hates what he hates. We have people who love a little of what God loves. And hate love a little of what God uh, they, 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 they love a little of what God loves, hate a little of what God hate, uh, loves, then they, they hate a little of what God hates and love a little of what God hates. That's a confused man. The man has no standing and he, he doesn't stand for anything. He can he can preach faith. He loves faith. But he will never preach against divorce. So he loves faith which God loves. But he hates divorce. But he loves divorce which God hates. He even makes excuses. Instead of telling people in the church, pray and seek the face of God before you get married. He said, No, if the man is not working, get up. There's somebody else that, that, that will wait for you. What kind of rubbish is that? That is not the man that has the anointing of God upon him. Such a man cannot overcome. Because it is God that overcomes. And it's the man who has overcome the heart of God that God will overcome on his behalf. Those who get rewarded are those who keep on doing what pleases him, regardless of the tribulations, regardless of the trials, regardless of the temptation. 
As long as you keep doing what is pleasing to God, even when the challenge is there. He said to Meshach, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, after they had become officials in Babylon, they said to them, Bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. They told Nebuchadnezzar that, O oh, king, we're not careful to answer you on this matter. We want you to know that the God whom we serve, He is able to deliver us. But paradventure, just to tell them, to tell him that it doesn't matter, say, paradventure, if He doesn't deliver us, we want you to know we're not going to bow. Dancing in the fire, they were called out and they didn't smell fire on their bodies. Why? God was protecting them. Why? They were pleasing to God. They said, we, we will do what God says we should do, not what you want us to do. And these were high officials. You would have expected that they want to protect their job. They said, no, we can't do this. We're not going to bow. Today I hear that people are now bowing down to money. You say, how is that so? People are taking money from politicians and swear oaths. Politicians themselves who say they are Christians are doing all kinds of dangerous, crazy things because they want position. I hear some of them are even joining cults. But on Sunday they are in church. They sit in front. And you think God is happy with them. And then the pastor, who doesn't do anything, is there saying, you will succeed. You will succeed. You will make it. Raise up your hand. And leave. what are you doing? You are saying to a sinner that you will succeed. With success. Those who get rewarded must also finish well. Starting is good. You don't finish your starting, it's futile. It's better not to start at all. So before you start, count the cost. Make sure that once you enter this thing, you are going to see it. Oh, there will be challenges, there will be things that we want to push you down. Then go through it. You may start poorly, but if you finish strong, you have truly overcome. God's interest is in those who finish well, not those who start well. Doesn't matter how you start, just finish well. Rewards are given by the Lord. And you have to run by the race level, you have to play by the rule. Otherwise, you don't get any reward. In Revelation chapter 12, chapter 22. Revelation 22, I read verse 12, verse 14, and verse 15. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. Okay, let's read 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. We know this is Lord Jesus Christ speaking. He says, My reward is with me. He's the one who's giving it. He says, Blessed, verse 14, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right. To the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. You cannot be living in disobedience to God and be boasting that you are entering. You are not entering heaven anywhere. You cannot be serving God grudgingly and say you are going to enter. You are not entering anywhere. Let's not fool ourselves. This is the truth. Look at verse 15. It says, But outside are dogs. Who are dogs? The Bible describes dogs as those who have, who have vomited something and went back to eat the vomit. Those who claim to have been born again but have now come back to the world, they are dogs. That's how God refers to They are dogs. He says, outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Like Ahab, some people love lies. When you are telling them the truth, they hate you. When you are lying, they love you. Some people, they love lies. They are going to be outside. Oh, they may be in the church today, 
then they'll be outside when, when the time for eternity comes. You cannot be sexually immoral and tell me that you are going to hell. Which hell? If you like preach the best sermons in the world, you are still going to hell. Have you never heard that? God said that even rocks will preach. So preaching pre preach is not the preacher that God is interested in per se. As in the character of the preacher. So I challenge us. If you are not, if you have not started doing the will of God, doing the work that God asks you to do, this is the time to start. If you started, but you gave up midway, it's time to go and dedicate yourself and go and restart. Take off from where you stopped. And if you are walking, don't let anything stop you. Continue. Don't worry. Men may laugh at you. You may not even see the results. But don't worry. God sees. I heard the story of a man who went to Mongolia to go and preach the gospel. Before he left his country to go to Mongolia, his diary was filled with statements of hope. How he will minister to people, the what do you call them now? The believers uh, things he will teach for believers class, the minister, how he will raise the ministers, ministers training. He laid all those things down. Excited. When he arrived at Mongolia, the entry also showed his excitement that now I'm in Mongolia. I've seen the people. Oh, what wonderful things we are expecting from the Lord. Ten years later, they looked at the entries. He said, oh, much toiling, much labors, not one soul. Twenty years later, we continue to trudge out, yet not one soul. That man spent 30 to 40 years or so in Mongolia, not one soul. But you know what? Every single thing he did there counts in heaven. He may not have brought anybody, but he labored in that place. These days, I don't know the kind of cheap Christianity that we are practicing. That we think that because you are distributing biscuit and, and, and bread and clothing, the place is full of people who are there just to receive biscuit and clothing. You say you have praised the gospel. What gospel have you preached? Have you spoken to them about sin? That's why Mongolians could not accept it because they were preaching to them against sin. Have you spoken to them about the idols they are running after? Let them come and sit down after you've told them that what they are doing in keeping girlfriends is wrong. They will never sit down there. But you want to give them food, they will take food. But tell them about sin in their lives, they will run away. What we have in the churches today is a membership trap. And God is not interested in membership. God is interested in disciples. Men and women who will continue in the truth that is in the word of God. Men and women who are set free by the truth that they have contacted in, in the word of God. So I challenge you to go forth and begin to do the works of God. Go and surrender to God. Fall on trilling. Let it not be sickness that will make you surrender. Let it not be one hard trial that no man can save you that will make you surrender. Well, surrender now. Say, Lord, I surrender. What do you want me to do? You remember Saul of Tarsus. When the Lord appeared to him, smote him with light. Historians have the account that. Paul never fully regained his sight after that incident. Let that not be what will happen. You remember Samson? Samson who could not keep his eyes from women until they plucked out his eyes and put him in chains, serving in the dungeon of the enemy. The enemy that he terrorized once, he is now a slave to the enemy. 
You know how God restored him? But what was, what was the end of the restoration? He killed both himself and the Philistines. The Bible says that the number of Philistines uh, Samson killed that day was more than all the Philistines he killed during his lifetime of freedom. He could have submitted freely and would have gained so much from the kingdom. But he wanted to have the best of two worlds. Like many of us want to have the best of two worlds. Let me tell you the, the blunt, honest to God truth. It doesn't exist. You can't have the best of two worlds. You are either on the side of God or you're on the side of Satan. The Lord Jesus even made it clear. He said, who, He who is not gathering with me is against me. Is gathering. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, I'm not, this thing I'm doing, is it gathering with the Lord? Or am I scattered? You can gather 10,000 people into a world and preach a message that is not of God. You have scattered. Because the heart of those people have not been influenced towards God. It's been influenced away from God. You have scattered. You are not working for God. And there are people who are very wicked. By their wickedness, they have made many people to run to God and to stay with God. They have done that. If they can just repent, they will get to heaven. I'm telling you, that's what the Lord Jesus was saying. Tax collectors and prostitutes, they are entering into the kingdom before you. Let us pray. Pray.
Roman reigning 